Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with green onion garlic naan bread. That's right, I'm gonna show you how to make naan like Chef John. When I want it fast and I don't wanna use yeast and have to wait for a dough to rise, but I also want it just as good as if I did. And while I originally tried this method to save time, it produces what might be my favorite style of naan. It really is incredible, whether you add green onions and garlic or not. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with some bread flour in a bowl. And yes, you can use all purpose, but I think the bread flour makes for a better, slightly more chewy texture. And then to that, we will add some salt, plus a couple teaspoons of baking powder. No, not baking soda, baking powder. And then what we'll do is grab a whisk and give this a good mix until we're pretty sure everything's been evenly combined. At which point we'll stop and add some plain Greek style yogurt. And pro tip, place it in gently and don't just throw it in like this unless you want a bunch of flour flying out of the bowl, which you don't. So be careful when you transfer that in. But anyway, these things will happen and I'm not gonna make things worse by getting upset. But what I am gonna do is finish this up with some freshly crushed garlic, plus about a half cup of freshly and thinly sliced green onions, also known in some parts as scallions and in certain parts of Texas, for some reason, chives. And then what we'll do is take a wooden spoon or some other sturdy stirring utensil, and we will slowly start mixing this, being careful not to knock even more flour out of the bowl. But as that mixture starts to pull together, we can get a little more aggressive, and we will keep mixing and stirring and pressing until we form what we call in the business a shaggy dough. And once we have reached this point, we will stop and transfer that onto our work surface where we will finish our dough digitally, which means we're gonna use our fingers and the hands they're attached to, to press this all together into a ball. And once that does all come together, we can start to knead and we will continue kneading for a few minutes until our dough sort of smooths out and becomes a little bit elastic. And once our dough's picked up all those loose bits from the work surface, it might start to get a little bit sticky. And if that happens, just stop and dust on a little bit of flour, but be careful not to use too much. Because while it's easier to work with, the more flour you add, the drier and less supple the final product will be. So we always wanna use the absolute minimum amount of flour that's necessary. And we don't have to knead this for a super long time. Like I said, we're just trying to smooth things out and develop a little bit of elasticity. And we wanna to get to the point where if we pull on the dough, it sort of stretches and pulls back a little bit. Or if that dough just sort of breaks off into your fingers, you have to knead it a little more but mine was feeling pretty good at this point. So I went ahead and formed that back into a ball and then gave my surface and the top of the dough one more dusting of flour, at which point we'll cover that with plastic and we will let it rest on the counter for about 15 to 20 minutes, which is technically optional, like everything else in life. And if you're having some kind of non-bread emergency, you can cook this right away, but I do find the dough easier to work with if we do let it rest for a little bit. But whether you let it rest or not, what we'll do to portion this is take our bench scraper and we'll cut this into six equal pieces, which we can do just by eyeing it. Or of course we could weigh this on a digital scale and then divide by six and portion perfectly right down to the gram. But regardless, once we're done, we'll take one of those portions and roll it into a ball and then we will place that on a generously floured surface. And again, using as much flour as we need, we will roll that dough out until it's nice and thin. Okay, about an eighth of an inch or less. And no, I didn't say you had to roll it out into a circle, since it might not roll out into a circle. All right, maybe you end up with an oval or a rectangle or a trapezoid, which I don't exactly remember what that is. But the point is we don't care about the shape as long as we get it nice and thin. And if it happens to come out round, great. And if it doesn't, who cares? Okay, we have much more important things to worry about, like not using too much flour but this dough is relatively wet and sticky, so we are gonna need a certain amount, but in general, as I already said, we wanna use the minimum amount possible. So that's what I did, and I eventually got mine nice and thin, and not to brag, but sort of round. And that's it, as soon as our dough is rolled out, it is ready to transfer into a very hot, but dry cast iron skillet, or something similar, that we have placed over medium high heat. And what we'll do is give that first side about a minute, during which time you're gonna see little bubbles forming on the surface. And after about a minute, we should have some decent browning happening underneath. And we'll go ahead and flip that over. 
and we'll give the other side about a minute as well. And even though this is not going to puff up into a balloon like when we do pita bread, I still do like to give it a little press with a spatula, since that pressure it creates increases the heat, which makes the bubbles inside the dough puff up even more, and helps create that beautiful, light, supple texture we're going for. And that's it, I'm going to flip that back over, and give each side about 15 or 20 more seconds. And please be careful not to go too long in the pan, right? Sometimes people go for a little extra browning, and they end up drying out the dough, and it kind of gets stiff. All right, you'll notice as I lift this out of the pan with the spatula to transfer it onto a plate, how it is still very flexible and supple. And keeping it like that really is key. And once we do transfer that onto a plate to rest, we'll want to cover that with a kitchen towel while we cook the other ones, which is going to keep these nice and moist and prevent them from drying out. And that's it, we'll continue cooking these until all six are done. And by the way, unlike some of my peers who will only show you the good ones, as you can see on this one, we have a hole. But that is not a problem. That is not anything. That is just a hole. And when you've added as much onion and garlic as we have, that very well might happen to you. And if it does, I don't want you to feel bad. I want you to feel good. Because it's fine. And in a perfect world, you're doing this with a friend, or a spouse, or both. That way one person can be rolling while the other person's at the stove cooking. But once you get good at these, you can actually roll one out during the time it takes to cook one. So what I'm trying to say is you don't have to have a friend or a spouse to do this. So we will go ahead and roll cook and stack until we've done all six. And again, we want to keep those covered with a towel while we're working to trap in all that residual heat and moisture. And once we're done, we'll move into final production, which involves the buttering of the bread. So we'll go ahead and uncover those and unstack them. And we'll go ahead and brush that first one on both sides with melted butter. Right, not too much, just a nice light coating. And then we'll place another one over the top. But for the rest of them, we're only going to brush that top surface because the bottom is going to be touching that butter from the one underneath. So for the rest of these, we'll only apply that to the top. And that's it. We started from the bottom. Now we're here. And our green onion garlic naan are ready to enjoy. So let me go ahead and grab one and fold it up, which is how I like to serve them. And yes, it did take me a little while to get that one exactly how I wanted since I was trying to get it in the optimal position for the contractually obligated pictures. And after taking way too many of those, I finally tore a piece apart and went in for the official taste. And that, my friends, was just an exceptional piece of naan. And I don't just mean for a fast, no yeast method. I mean like any naan with any technique. To me, this is as good as it gets. Okay, texturally, we have that contrast between those crusty brown blistered spots and the rest of the bread, which is supple and soft and slightly elastic with a very addictive chewiness. And as far as the taste goes, I would be more than happy with a piece of plain buttered naan bread. But when you fill it with those sweet, savory green onions and copious amounts of garlic, it just makes it that much better. And of course, that nice brushing of butter doesn't hurt. But I have enjoyed these as is without the butter, and they're perfectly fine like that as well. So that is up to you. I mean, you are after all the Don Juan of your green onion garlic naan. And speaking of great lovers, there is nothing freshly made naan loves more than to be dipped in a nice spicy curry. And in case you're keeping score at home, this was a tikka masala that we got from our favorite Indian restaurant in town. And I would give you the name, but they insist on charging me full price. And if there's a better meal than a rich, spicy, aromatic curry, ideally filled with chunks of moist chicken, wrapped in freshly made green onion garlic naan, I don't know what it is. It is truly a match made in culinary heaven. But anyway, that's it. My favorite shortcut method for making naan, or as we call it around the office, naan, na 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 I know that is kind of long for a nickname, but still kind of catchy. But what's not long is the time it takes to make this incredible, freshly made naan bread. And whether you add green onions and garlic to yours or not, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.